Welcome, welcome to uh, the Virtual Women's Wellness Speaker Series. My name is Jess Posner. I am the Director of Virtual Programs and Membership Services with the YMCA of Central New York. And it is my pleasure to welcome you all once again um, to our first ever Virtual Women's Wellness Speaker Series. So I am going to start things off by giving a little bit of an introduction, um, and then we, I will introduce both of our speakers who are here with us today, um, and we will continue on as we do each week. All right, so as I mentioned, my name is Jess Posner and I'm the Director of Virtual Programs of the YMCA of Central New York. I'm really excited to be hosting this event tonight from the YMCA's Northside Women's Wellness Center. Um, I'm actually in the primetime childcare facility, which I will tell you a little bit in a moment. And actually one of our speakers, Javana Rucker is in. Yeah. There as well. Um, every week we've been give like a little virtual tour of the center. So by the end of the series, the idea being that we'll have seen most of the rooms of the new building. So um, again, really excited to be here. This is the third in our four part series focusing on women's wellness. Tonight's guests include the incredible Precious Walker and Javana Rucker, who I will introduce in more depth very shortly. After tonight, we have just one more event next Tuesday, and our guests will be Katora Cochran Albright, a social worker, marriage and family therapist, health minister, maternal health and maternal mental health expert, certified lactation consultant and doula, Kiana Yearwood, a personal chef and business owner, and Heather Shannon, a New York State licensed midwife, women's health nurse practitioner, and OBGYN nurse practitioner. That event will happen um, in the same place, the same link, um, the same day of the week, and the same time. And we really do hope that you will join us for that. I'm also very pleased to share that we'll be releasing all of the events in this series on the YMCA of Central New York's YouTube and virtual Y On Demand channel on March 8th on occasion of International Women's Day. So if you would like to share this with anybody or rewatch anything or catch up on any of the ones you missed, that'll be um, your opportunity to do so forevermore. The series is presented by the YMCA of Central New York, following up on interest expressed by the community residents engaged by Northside Up, St. Joseph's Health, and the many community partners that collaborated in the creation of the new YMCA Northside Women's Wellness Center located at 900 North McBride Street, Syracuse, New York, 13208. The February 2021 YMCA Virtual Women's Wellness Speaker Series focuses on topics at the intersection of women's wellness, health and wellness topics affecting the Black community, and caring for the heart broadly defined. Our speakers include women medical providers, health professionals, and community wellness experts who have firsthand experience of the transformative potential of building a life of wellness. One of the main reasons we are convening tonight is to celebrate the opening of the YMCA's new Northside Women's Wellness Center, which opened to members and the public in late January 2021. We're excited to share that we have new extended hours, which are Monday through Thursday, 5.30 a.m. to 7 p.m., and then Friday from 5.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. For those of us that have joined weekly, um, as I mentioned, you know that we've been doing this virtual tour. And I'm actually sitting on the floor in our family primetime room. You can see the kind of like some of the toys behind me. It's very cute. I'm on like a map of the world with a lot of really cute kids on it. Um, and uh, Javana, as I mentioned, I'm going to spotlight her real quick so you can see her too. Hold on, let me do this. All right, so you can see she's actually in our group fitness class, um, which is lined with mirrors, has lots of cool uh props and different kinds of tools to use. Um, and we'll get to see a little bit more of that in a second. So I'm going to take your spotlight off for a second, Giovanna. Okay. Um, and then, hold on, let me, I got to get back to my script here. <laughs> All right, guys, bear with me. All right. So, um, so that's our mini tour for this week. And the prime time room is actually really cool because it will be offering free short term child watching services while members are using the facility. Um, the specific prime time isn't quite up and running yet, but it will be in coming weeks. So if you are a member or are interested in becoming a member and would like to learn more about prime time or perhaps use it at this facility, please do give us a call or you can reach out to me at virtual at YMCA cny.org um, and i'll post that in the chat too 
All right, so as I do each week, I would love to share a little bit of the history of the center and how it came to be. The project of the Northside Women's Wellness Center began with Center State CEO through its Northside Up program, which facilitated a community collaborative to design, develop, and launch the Northside YMCA Women's Wellness Center. First imagined in 2013 during a series of community engagement meetings facilitated by Northside Up and St. Joseph's Health, the new center offers a safe and culturally welcoming space for women from um, the north side and greater Syracuse area to exercise, access community resources, and connect with neighbors. And it also will offer short-term child watching services in this very room, um, allowing women to focus on their health and well-being while in the space. The entire project was designed through a diverse cross-section of Northside residents and community partners who directly informed program design, project location, and architectural design, business model, partner identification, and fundraising. Northside Up also helped to secure the project site, led the effort to raise $1.5 million in funds for construction and operating costs, and recruit the YMCA to become the owner and operator of the center. Working together, the YMCA community residents and other stakeholder partners are helping to ensure the center continues to be welcoming to women of all cultures, abilities, and socioeconomic background. To schedule a tour or visit of the Northside Women's Wellness Center, you can visit our website, and I'll paste this information in the chat in just a moment. Um, and you can also join online. We're running a special where if you join using our special code, I'm going to put this in the chat right now. There's no joining fee. So that's really exciting. And that's only through the end of February. So um, if you are interested and you want to schedule a tour um, or you want to, you know, reach out or you want to learn more, like, please get in touch with us and we would love to do that. The YMCA also offers financial assistance for anyone that needs it on a sliding scale based on your income. So if you're interested in learning more about that, please also reach out to us as well. All right, we have many partners, um, you know, which I am always thankful for. I'm not going to read them today out of interest of time, um, but I have read them on the other nights. Um, and again, I just want to say that if you have any other questions about anything that I've mentioned, please feel, feel free to me, Jess Posner, at virtual at and I'm happy to do my best to answer your questions or connect you to the best person who can. So for tonight's program, here's kind of like the rules of engagement. Each speaker is going to speak for about 20 to 25 minutes, um, one after the next. Javana Rucker will speak first, and I'll introduce her. And then when she's finished with her presentation, I'll introduce Precious Walker, who will speak next. Following both of their presentations, we'll have a joint Q&A session. So if you have questions, feel free to enter them into the chat at any time. Um, the sort of like politest time to do it would be in between the, lect in between the lectures, as it may be. Um, and I will collect those and then I will mon be monitoring or mediating basically a Q&A session based on audience participation. So um, in the past, we've had a really vibrant and lovely Q&A session. So if there's anything that you have questions on for either of, the either of our speakers or for both of them, um, please do make those known so that we can use those as a starting off point for a lovely community-based conversation. All right, so without further ado, I would love to introduce our first speaker of the evening. Welcome, Javana. Javana Rucker was born and raised in Syracuse, New York. She is a graduate of Nottingham High School and Contemporary School of Beauty, where her career in the beauty industry began. She is the owner and operator of Divine Destiny Creations, located at 755 North Salina Street in Syracuse, New York. Her love for hair has allowed her to share her gift with many people over the last 25 years. She is currently an educator for Ashte, located in Greenboro, Greensboro, North Carolina. She worked with the Continental School of Beauty in 2016 and 2017 before going on to further her education and obtain her Master Barber license. Javana believes that knowledge is power, and to stay on top, you need to continue learning. She is certified in hair loss, keratin treatments, eyelash extensions, Pravana hair color, babe extensions, and more. She travels across the world, educating and learning new techniques. So without further ado, I'm gonna pass the microphone over to you, Javana, um, and the stage is yours. Okay, good evening, everyone. It's an honor and a privilege um, to be here tonight. Thank you, Jess, for um, this wonderful invitation and to be able to be amongst great women tonight. Um, I work with women. My profession, um, as Jess said, is 
I'm a cosmetologist. Um, so I work with women every day. I've been um, a licensed stylist for 25 years. So I see the matters of the heart. I see all the different issues um, that women face um, every day. Um, and it's, it's a lot. So I get to enhance their beauty, but also their hearts as well. Um, you know, I, I can, I care about their hearts. I care about um, the things that they have going on. And um, tonight, I just want to start off, even though we probably know this definition, but wellness, the definition of wellness, the state of being in good health, especially as an actively pursued goal. So for women, we have so many different roles we play. Um, we're, we're wives, we're mothers. Um, some of us are students. Um, we have careers. We have so many different hats. We're in the community um, helping with different um, programs in the community. We have so many different, ha so many different hats. Um, so we have to make sure that we take care of ourselves first. We have to make sure that we give ourselves the love and the balance that we need first, because if we don't take care of us, we're not good to anyone at all. So we always want to make sure that our state of being is one that is great. Um, the definition of wellness, I went over that, but let's go over the medical definition of wellness. The condition of good physical and mental health, especially when actively maintained by proper diet, exercise, and avoidance of risky behavior. Diet is so important. And myself, um, after I turned 40, I realized that I couldn't eat the same things that I used to eat when I was 20 years old. So it's so important um, to keep our wellness and to keep our, our physical and our mental, we have to eat better. Um, I used to be able to eat burgers, fries, all of that stuff, and I would be fine. But after 40, I realized I can't eat like that anymore. And even in your 20s, it's good to, to start having, um, you know, a healthy diet, even with your hair. Um, and I could see doing hair for so long, I could tell when people have a healthier diet, when they're drinking their water, it's very important to drink water. It comes out, it comes out into our skin, our hair, all of those things are important. So even at a, a younger age, it's always good to maintain the proper diet, um, exercise. Exercise is so important. And it just so happens I'm right in the YMCA. This place is so beautiful. It's such a wonderful facility. Um, and it's just reminded me to make sure I stay on my routine of um, exercising, even 30 minutes a day. My doctor told me 30 minutes a day, even if I walk for 30 minutes a day, it does my body so good. So exercising is definitely important for us to maintain our mental health, our physical health, everything, everything coincides, our mental health, physical health, everything coincide um, with one another. How do you define wellness? I Google this. Wellness is the act of practicing healthy habits on a daily basis to attain better physical and mental health outcomes. So that instead of just surviving, you're thriving. Several key areas of your lifestyle are considered dimensions of overall wellness. So we want to, we don't want to just survive, we want to thrive. So if we put in our diet, better foods, if we exercise, that's going to allow ourselves to thrive. And as women, we need, we need that. We need all of that. We need that balance of that exercise. We need that balance of um, just that me time. Even going, when you're going to the spa, that self-care is so important. Um, getting a massage, taking time for yourself, even if it's just going in the bathroom, lighting a candle, putting something in your bath water, bubbles in the bath, Epsom salt in the bath, whatever you, whatever works best for you, shutting your door, locking the door, letting the kids know, I'll be out in a minute. You have to get that time for yourself just to, to refresh your mind and to to renew your mind, just a time away, even if it's 30 minutes, an hour, just get away. I don't know, everyone um, has different beliefs, um, but meditation is something that is so important um, to connect spiritually. Um, and everyone has their different belief systems and beliefs and who they believe in. But if you can just take time to meditate before you start your day, um, 
10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever you can do that fits your schedule that you can get in there. Meditation is so important just to start because you have so much pulling at you. As soon as you wake up, your phone is ringing, emails, text messages, different things like that. Um, you have appointments you have to take care of. But if you take that time in the morning before any of that starts and just meditate and take time for yourself, I'm telling you, your day will be so much better. Pulling away and um, just getting that time is just so key. It's so important. Even if you, self-care could be reading a book. You know, a lot of times we hear self-care, 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 but sometimes people don't really even understand what self-care is. For a lot of my clients, and I didn't realize this until um, the pandemic, when we went through the pandemic, we were closed down for about three months. But when we were able to open back up, so many of my clients told me that their self-care is coming to get their hair done. Their time is coming to get their hair done because I create an atmosphere in there where it's just, it's welcoming, it's warm, it's, um, it's relaxing. Sometimes people fall asleep when I'm doing their hair. You know, they're so relaxed that they just, they just fall asleep. I didn't realize how much um, getting your hair done for my clients, it was, that was their, that was their time. It was so therapeutic. You know, one of my clients, she, she sent me a card through the mail and she said, thank you for um, taking care of my hair and my soul. You know, that, that meant a lot to me because it's not just about making people feel beautiful on the outside, but also on the inside, because everything we do starts from the inside out and it shines out. You know, um, a lot of people are going through a lot of things. We're still, we're still in a pandemic. We still have um, a ways to go. But if we implement some of these things to help that meditation, help um, just 15 minutes reading a book or something like that, talk with someone. It's so important. And that's what I love about my job because I, I talk to so many different people and people feel free to share so many different things with me. Sometimes people don't have an outlet. They don't have anyone to talk to, but it's important that you create a circle of people that you can trust and that you can connect to. And, you know, sometimes certain issues you go through as women, we have so many different issues, raising children. Um, I have five children myself and each, each one of my children are five different personalities. Okay. Each one is so different. So when you connect with someone else that has children, maybe someone older, you can look at as a mentor or something, you can actually help. They can help you. You know, it's, it's good to connect. And as women, it's good to connect with other women that you can trust to connect and to help and to talk. So that's what I love about my job because I can, I connect with so many different women. They trust me. They pour out to me and I can pour into them because I'm always pouring into myself because I can't pour into anybody else unless I pour into myself first. So I'm always reading, taking classes, um, just doing whatever I can to keep myself educated so that I can help other people and other women, especially because I deal with women, mainly women on a, um, a regular basis. Um, but definitely, um, I want to just stress the point of the self-care. Take time for yourself. Take time for yourself. Do the things that you love to do. Do things that make you feel happy. You know, um, do things that create a peaceful environment for yourself. And a lot of things don't take a lot of money. It's just simple things you have at home. Like I said, lighting a candle in your bathroom is that self-care, you know, sitting in the bathtub with a book, that's self-care. You know, there's so many different things that you can do. And of course, coming to get your hair done, that's self-care, you know, getting a massage, precious. She does massages. Getting a massage is such a wonderful thing. I try to get a massage once a month because I'm, I'm working with my hands. I'm on my feet a lot. So that's something I do for myself because it's very important. Um, my, I'm standing a lot. So I want to make sure my back, everything is good. So that's something I do for myself to make sure that I stay um, physically, physically fit besides, you know, exercising as well. But um, and balance in your life. We have a lot of people that are going through financial stress right now because of the pandemic, you know, so it's important that you don't allow that financial stress to, to take you over because the number one um, death of women is definitely is heart disease. Stress will kill you. So you want to make sure you're doing things that your stress level, we're always going to have some type of stress in our life, but we can minimize it by doing different things and balancing our life and um, financial stresses, you don't want to, um, that will over, that will definitely overtake you. Any type of stress can overtake you, but there's so many different people and so many different resources that we have in the community that can help. 
So I just want women to know that you're never alone. You don't have to be alone. There's so many different people that you can reach out to and get a nice support system. It's important to have a support system. My mom is on the Zoom. I, I'm, I'm so grateful that I was blessed with a wonderful mom. She so, has so much wisdom. I'm so thankful for that. And she supports me in everything I do. So it's so important to have um, a great support system. You need that definitely in life. You need it. Um, you need that in life. Um, let's see. And another thing I wanted to say is um, go to the doctors too. A lot of times people are so afraid. Um, I don't know if it, they're afraid of what the results or whatever it may be, but it's important for us to go to the doctor, go to the dentist, make sure we're taking care of that um, that part. We go to the dentist, you get your six month um, cleaning every six months. Make sure you do that. Go to your doctor, make sure you go to your, um, get your mammograms. It's important. I started getting a mammogram when I was 40. Um, so I get one every year. You have to make sure you know what's in your family line. If your uh, family has diabetes, cancer, cancer ran rampant in my family. So I started getting a mammogram at 40 years old and I get one every year. So it's just important um, to make sure you're taking care of yourself and going to the doctors and making sure you're drinking your water. Water is so important as well. And I know I'm like all over the place, but it's just, it's so much, you know, so many different things that we could do um, just to make sure that we're healthy and that we're, we're staying connected and stay connected with a group of women. It's just, it's, it's so important to stay connected. I have so many great mentors um, that I can call at any time. Financial mentors, I have business mentors, spiritual mentors. It's very important as you grow, you need people that are already at a level where you're trying to get to. You need that, you need that wisdom. You definitely need that wisdom. So you definitely need a group of um, mentors to help you to get to that next level. And don't be afraid to, um, to ask for help. That's another thing. Um, a lot of times as women, we try to carry everything on our shoulders, every single thing. We, we have so many different hats. Like I said, um, don't be afraid to, to ask for help. It's okay to ask for help. Um, we need to ask for help because we're not called to do every single thing. Like this Zoom meeting, you know, Jess is putting this on, but we have different people in the community that can help and that can put input in I may say something that someone else never maybe thought of and vice versa, you know, so never be afraid to ask for help. Okay. Um, I think that's all I have, Jess. I know you said like 20 minutes. I <laughs> well, I, I actually have a question. I have, I have, I have, you know, like a question, you know, mm -hmm. specifically for you, mm -hmm. um, you know, because of the fact that your profession brings you to interface with so many different women day in and day out. I was wondering if there was anything you could like reflect on in terms of patterns that you've noticed and the ways that like women may be um, challenged with or are sort of like, you know, any like challenges that you've noticed that like women have are now facing right as a result of the pandemic that perhaps are a little bit different or were perhaps surprising or even something that is um you know maybe to be expected and then if you've noticed any ways in which those women are utilizing or mirroring resilience right that are like performing a certain type of resiliency and how it is day in and day out that they are getting through those things mm -hmm. that come up what I've noticed, um, a lot sense? of clients, a lot of my clients, they do have children. Um, so it was the whole um, hybrid um, learning. We have some some parents are they're full time they're full time teachers right now. So trying to balance um, work, and a lot of um, my clients they're working from home, but they have to balance the work from home and also teaching their children and having a schedule. Um, I found out that like a, a lot of women, and then I have a lot of women that are single mothers as well too. So you're, you're a single mom, you're full-time, you're working full-time, and then you're a teacher full-time. So trying to balance that was a challenge for a lot of women in the beginning, but now um, that they're used to it, a lot of my clients, they have a schedule now where they have they're in their, they're doing their work. And then the kids are doing their zoom meetings and different things like that. So they'll say, okay, don't knock on the door right now. Mommy has to, you know, finish this up. So, um, balancing all of that and getting a schedule, um, has helped a lot of my clients, um, to really 
to really get through it. Because at first, like in September, that was the most complaint. It was like, I can't, I can't do this. I can't work at home. I can't, you know, I'm teaching my kids, you know, so that was, that was really, really hard for um, a lot of the women trying to balance everything with the, with school. Um, but so far, so good. I have a lot of my clients that their kids are doing excellent in school. They're, they're getting, they're on honor roll. So it's, 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 it's really good. It's working out. But once you get, you have to um, find out what works for you and your family. So a lot of them have been able to adjust, thankfully, and um, get through all of this, get through all of this. And then family members as well. Um, a lot of family, I know some mothers have actually came um, to the house, like, and help while, the mother's working and, you know, someone that's retired, you know, they can come and help with the kids and stuff like that. You definitely, you need a team, you need a support system to get through, to get through things like this. You definitely do. You definitely do. Thanks so much, Devana. And what's also to me really striking about your answer is that the way in which you interface with women tracks over time, right? So it's, you know, because you see people to continuously help them with their own maintenance, right? It's this really beautiful way that you can um, follow growth in a person. So I just wanted to reflect that, that that's like a really beautiful gift, like as a healer, I would say, you know, to be yeah. a person that people can check in with. Um, and then I just want to ask one more question, actually, um, you know, because I know that there's a lot of people that are not yet quite comfortable going back into public spaces mm -hmm. like salons or other places like that um, to be around a other individuals. So do you have perhaps any recommendations for like women at home looking for some like self care tips specifically with their hair in terms of um, maintaining or treating their hair to like keep it healthy until they decide that they're like ready to come back for treatments? Yes. Um, and that's funny that you said that just because it's, I, I didn't know how everything was going to pan out when we open back up. But honestly, like all of my clients, um, they have been coming like, I swear, it's, it's something about coming to get your hair done. It's just so, it's such a relief to them. I don't know what it is. Like I have been, I have been like booked like every day. Like it's, it's something that people are like, I need to do something. I got to get out this house or something. So for me, it's been like, business has been so great with um, the pandemic. I changed so much. I changed a lot of my, um, the way I do business. It's like one person at a time. So everybody's in and out and it's not um, a lot of people there at one time, but it's, it's, it's so funny because people really want to get out to um, get their, to get their hair done and get services. But for the ones that are, um, you know, at home, definitely, you need a shampoo and conditioning regimen you want to make sure you do once a week, twice a week, um, once a week or either um, every two weeks. It just depends because I deal with clients that have like extensions in their hair. Um, I deal with clients that have haircuts. So it just depends on your curl pattern and type of, um, you know, type of hair you have. So definitely you want to uh, make sure you're shampooing and conditioning your hair. Um I have so many different shampoos. I use Ashtay products. So we have the sulfate free shampoo and sulfate free shampoo will be good for someone that has color in their hair, someone that's natural. Um, I have conditioning detangling shampoo and you can also purchase these products from um, the salon as well. So if you don't want to, like a person doesn't want to um, come in, they can also come and purchase um, products at the salon as well. Um, but definitely you want to have a um, shampoo and conditioning regimen that you want to do weekly, um, every two weeks or twice a week, whatever works best for you. Um, so I would tell them to shampoo their hair, condition it. If a lot of people don't have a sit at sit under dryer at home, but what you can do, you can, um, have, if you have a plastic cap, put your conditioner on, put your plastic cap on and actually take a towel. You want to take a towel, um, and wet it, put it in a microwave, maybe for about three minutes. And you can literally put that towel around your, your plastic cap and sit, drink your tea, drink your coffee, and let it sit for like 15 minutes. And that, when I tell you, it feels so good. The steam from, um, the steam from that towel is so relaxed, and that could be something that you could do at home. You could sit on your couch, sit on your bed, whatever. Drink your tea, drink your coffee, whatever you like, and that would be something that you could do um, at home. And then definitely every time you um, shampoo your hair, you always want to leave, use a leave-in conditioner. So any type of leave-in conditioner you can get and then blow dry your hair or wet set it or whatever you want to do, um, you know, whatever style fits you. But definitely um, if you take a, a towel, wet it and put it around your head, that's like the best thing ever. 
the best thing ever. It's so relaxed. And so that's something you could do if you can't get into the salon. All right. Thank you so much. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with us? I think I shared everything, I believe. Yes, I think that's all. All right. Well, thank you so much for such a generous, open-hearted um, presentation on so many different sorts of things, um, you know, that all come together really through your unique perspective of being a person who takes care of so many people um, and helps them see themselves in the best light possible, right? And I think yeah. that that's one of the most, like, beautiful things about your profession and the way that you've spoken about it is that as people work from the inside out, you're able to show them how they want to be seen, yeah. you know, and there's such power in that, you know, yeah. such power in um, helping specifically women see themselves in the best light possible. So um, yeah. thank you for sharing your practice, your profession, your wisdom. And I can see that we already have some questions coming in. So I am copying and pasting those into another document. So okay. if folks have have more questions for Javana, um, please, or for both of our speakers, please go ahead and paste those in the chat, either directly to me or publicly. And uh, I will, we'll come back to them, you know, at the end of Precious's uh, conversation. So thanks again, Javana. I'm going to you. remove your spotlight. And I'm going to add in Precious. Okay. All right. So it is my pleasure to now introduce our second speaker of the evening, Precious Walker, LMT, is a native of Syracuse, a happily married wife of 15 years, and a proud mother of four vibrant children. Precious has an extensive background in the engineering field, but her passions led her to become a licensed massage therapist. She is the owner of Simply Precious Hands Massage Therapy Studio. Precious is certified in myoskeletal alignment and is also a posture and pain specialist. She is renowned for her deep tissue treatments and post-op recovery massage for cosmetic and plastic surgery. Precious completed her massage program at the Onondaga School of Therapeutic Massage and upon graduating received an award for best chair massage. You only get one body, so you have to take care of it, is a phrase Precious often expresses to her patients. Precious has spoken at various community events, educating the public about the benefits and values of massage therapy. She served as the commencement speaker at her alma mater, Onondaga School of Therapeutic Massage in 2016. She continues to volunteer at many events and serves on several boards. Simply Precious Hands has been established since 2011 and has received the Better Business Bureau accreditation as well as the MWBE certification. It is my pleasure to introduce you all to Precious Walker. Hello, everybody. Okay, so does everybody see my screen? <laughs> yep, we see it. Okay. It's <laughs> Just making sure. It's like those commercials. Can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> we got you. We can see it. So, <laughs> so yes, um, thank you, Jess, for um, inviting me to come. It, it's always an honor and a pleasure to, you know, speak on the behalf of uh, massage therapy. And as she said, I am a massage therapist. I focus more on medical massage. Um, so I like to start out on like with a blank slate. Um, because I try not to assume that everybody knows what a massage is. <laughs> so um, so the, the, the practice of massage dates back 5,000 plus years ago. And, you know, there are many different modalities as far as, you know, massage therapy. I'm pretty sure most people have heard, which is Swedish, which is like one of the top ones, top modalities that most people are familiar with. So there's there's Swedish, you hear about hot stones massage. Sometimes you might hear about uh, Thai massage, um, shiatsu massage. And you might hear about different techniques like cupping, lo lomi lomi. There's so many more <laughs> that are out there. So um, medical massage is a term that's starting to uh, 
go a little bit, get a little bit more noticed. Um, I've been doing that pretty much the entire time I've been a massage therapist. So the difference between, I would say, medical massage versus the other ones is that it's an outcome-based massage. So for me, what I do is if a person comes to me and they say that they're having back pains or whether it's upper back or lower back, I um, assess them and I evaluate them and I try to make sure whatever it is where, it's, where the pain is coming from, I try to get to that source and fix it. So my, um, my routine is not so much to, to have you come over and over and over again, which is fine if you want to keep up. But my, my main t goal is to fix the issue that's at hand. And um, some people, I put them on regimens. If it's, if it's, for example, if it's work-related, you know, a lot of us aren't fortunate enough to just go out and just walk off our jobs. <laughs> so, you know, a lot of times if it's work-related, then depending on the stress factor of their job, then I'll set them on a routine just to make sure I can keep them basically to manage that pain or that outcome that's that they're dealing with. So some of the benefits of uh, medical massage and massage is it can help with neuropathy. I've had a client that um, she was in a car accident and her foot ended up getting ran over and she had um, she her she had she had a lot of nerve damage. A tire was sitting on her foot, so I had to work on her over you know for a period of time and after a while she started to get the sensation back in her nerves um, massage also helps with circulation again it helps with pain management and of course it can help decrease headaches I used to be a, a migraine sufferer um, when I was in massage school I got a massage every day because we had that's how we learn you you give and you receive so I, the whole time I got a massage, I didn't get not one headache. <laughs> so, so I, I'm a witness to that, that it can decrease uh, your headaches. So for the medical training, the medical uh, massage that I do, there is like extra training for it, as well as um, some other modalities. They're like um, prenatal massage therapy, um, lymphatic massage therapy, just to name a few. Um, that will require, you know, a little bit of extra training because it's a little bit more in depth and a little bit more intense. Um, so it's on top of our requirements that we have to have for New York State. So a lot of people, when they say, oh, I'm going to go to massage school, they they don't realize what it entails to become a massage therapist. Because I tell people, you know, I was, you know, finishing my engineering degree and massage school was the hardest thing I've ever done so you know we have to have the thousand hours we have to take anatomy and physiology myology pathology and then you got to get into the hands-on and it's it's a lot <laughs> so after that you know once you find what you want to do your niche then you have to get another certification on top of that to kind of help you get specialized in the area that you're trying to focus on so as how um Javana had mentioned too, you know, the, the women of today, we are very busy. We wear many hats, you know, um, like she said, she is, she's a mom of five. I'm a mom of four, you know, just me and myself, you know, I, I run and operate my business. I had to come take care of home the kids. I have remote school and I have to deal with it. So it, it's a lot with many hats and it's, and it's, of uh, most of women, regardless of the age, it's a lot because just like how I'm um, Javana mentioned, you might have retired parents and grandparents helping out the working uh, mother just so she can get through her day. And a lot of times what happened with women is that we we're so nurturing that we take care of everyone and everything else that we put ourselves on the back on the back burner. So we tend to forget and um Sometimes that's why I think when you see like those makeovers that you see how women, you know, they forgot about themselves, you know, and that, you know, sometimes they might not ever get their hair done. They never get their nails done. They, you know, they walk around with just, you know, sweatpants and whatever all day, every day because sweatpants and t-shirts because, you know, every, they're so focused on everybody else. It's like, as long as the clothes is clean, it's fine. 
you know. So some some most times self care can come last for a lot of women, if at all. So that's what I want to say. Self care is not selfish. So sometimes, um, I think women, us as women, sometimes we we feel that it's selfish if we take care of ourselves. So if so if like if I want to go get a massage it's okay that I ask for somebody to babysit the kids so I can take care of myself. Or it's okay if I, you know, take a couple hours out my day to get my hair done. It's okay. You know, it's, and I think it's something that of a norm that we have to break because people can look at it as a selfish thing if you want to get certain things done because some people don't see that it's necessary. Some people even see things as getting your hair done or getting a massage as a luxury. I don't know if Jay Bonner sees that sometimes, but I know like for a lot for massage, a lot of people think that if you get a massage, it's a form of luxury. But no, it's a part of self-care. So to take care of yourself is not selfish at all. And that's why I always say you only get one body. (laughs) You got to take care of it. So when you think about the medical portion and the lifestyle portion, you know, um, massage can decrease stress. And as Javon had mentioned, you know, one of the leading things in women is heart disease. So massage can actually help decrease stress, lowering your, your blood pressure. Cause what massage does is it increases your endorphins, your serotonins, your dopamines, which is what we call sometimes the massage high. So if you ever had gotten a massage, you know, I had a client that told me <laughs> before that, you know, she was like, you massage me so well, I'm too drunk to even put my underwear back on. <laughs> so you, that's that massage high we talk about. So also where it comes for increasing those endorphins, it decreases your cortisol. So if you have too much cortisol or high stress levels, that can lead to your high blood pressure, you know, it can lead to fatigue. And high cortisol, excessive high cortisol can also lead to osteoporosis, which a lot of times, which, which hinders us because most women, you know, after a certain age or once menopause hits us, we start losing bone. So if you're already, you know, predisposed to lose bone naturally, once you hit a certain time of your life, then if you already put on top of that increased levels of cortisol, it's just going to speed up the process even more. So also, you know, massage aids and productivity. Um, I've seen more now how uh, corporations are including massages in their work environment, because if you're not stressed out, you can be productive. (laughs) If you're not tired, you can be productive. And if you're, if you don't have that much stress, you can be more productive, whether it's on the, in the work environment or at home. And overall, massages can help with your, uh, it can enhance your well-being. You know, um, my demographic of patients can be, um, I think my oldest client at the moment is she's about 80 years old. Um, Prior to COVID, my other uh, client um, was about 90 and she was driving herself here. And the thing that those two will say is precious keeps me going. Because another thing I tell people is that um, a body that's in motion stays in motion and motion is lotion. So, you know, if you, if you're always active, if you're always doing things, if you're always in a routine that keeps, I would say, keeps the lube up in, in your joints and in your muscles and massage helps with that. And it helps, um, especially if you're in that, if you're, if you are a senior citizen it helps you help with your blood circulation because as you get older, you, it's harder, you know, for your blood to start circulating as well as it did. So it helps with that too, and that's why too, like with with the one body uh, uh, thing that I always phrase that I always say is that if you take care of your body and you constantly do it, regardless of what point of your life that you're in, it'll take care of you in the long in the long haul. So if you start like today with a routine, whether it was whether it's a self massage or you start a massage, you know, at a, a massage practice, 
you'll start to notice the difference in your body. I tell people all the time, once you start getting a routine with a massage, then um, you'll know to, and pick up more things about your body that you didn't realize. And it can come all the way down to a cold. Because you're starting to become more in tune with your body, you start to pick up on different things. You'll start to know, okay, I must have did something wrong because now this muscle doesn't hurt or my body's getting ready to come down with something before you even so show any symptoms, whether it's a runny nose or a cough or a sneeze or even a fever, you will still you will start to feel that your body is starting to go under something because it's gonna feel different. So, so it, it helps you get well in tune. So when you think about massage, there's, there's so much diversity in massage as a whole. You have your holistic approach. Some people call it the hippie approach, <laughs> but it's, um, it's where you know, you're know you dealing with the physical, the emotional, the mental, and the spiritual of it all. I joke around and I tell people, I say, um, sometimes I'm a massage therapist and sometimes I am a therapist <laughs> because you, you're dealing with people and it's sometimes that one hour or one and a half hour, however long their session is, that's about the most time they'll get for undivided attention where they can just, whatever's just going on with them, they can just leave it right there in the, in the session. And it, and it relieves them, not just as far as muscle-wise, but for the emotional and the mental and the stress. And then when you think about spas, Sometimes it can be luxurious. It all depends on what you're getting. But I don't want people to think that massage as a whole is just luxurious. It depends on the certain treatment. Now, if you're going to a high-end spa, that's where you're going to deal with more luxurious type treatments. Um, you'll deal with more wraps and more mud baths and stuff like that. So those are when you're getting into those luxurious treatments. But even when you go into a spot, they have a certain atmosphere that they have that they, when you walk in, it's welcome. You know, you have like the candles or the diffusers going, you know, uh, letting out some essential oils to tie, kind of relax you. They'll have the hot towels and stuff for you to relax you. And this is before you even go get on the table. And some spas, you might get out your clothes and you have a nice robe and, and stuff to sit down before you even go into your massage. It's all about the experience, I would say, for the spa. And some and whereas as soon as you walk into that environment, that right there is like an emotional release, I will say, where the stress can go down immediately. And of course, as I mentioned, the medical, how it can help with so much and because like it can help with just not just like the kinks and the knots that the body may feel, but sometimes um, the muscles of the body can be so tight that it can yank on your bones because muscles attach to bones. So if your muscles are too tight on, a, on the area, or I can say like your rib, if your muscles are too tight on a rib and you do one false move you can you can basically we say you pull you get your rib out or with your lower back you know some people think when you bend down and pick up that piece of paper and you threw your back out it wasn't the bend that it wasn't the bending down motion that threw that that uh that that piece of paper caused to throw your back out it was the repeated time and time again of the motions that you've done and your body was probably already trying to tell you that something was wrong and that was just that last time you bent down to get something, that was a shot to break, break the camel's back. And also with um, the medical massage, like because of what I do, I work on um, people that had um, cosmetic surgery. So I help them with their recovery to keep down their fluid and stuff like that because that is starting to become um, big in Syracuse. And so I help with a lot of that. And also when people get their knee replacements and stuff, I help with that whether it's pre-surgery um, and post to make sure they're in as best shape as possible 
going into surgery and coming out of surgery. Oh, and that was the end of my presentation. <laughs> Can y'all still hear me? Yep. All right, good. <laughs> I just had to put a mask on real quick. I've um, got this microphone kind of like wedged up under the mask. But I just wanted to thank you so much um, for that presentation of generosity, uh, so well informed, um, and also for speaking to so many of the intersectional issues that, um, you know, health really com com is composed of, right? You know, in terms of, you know, stress management and how, you know, like that, in, that tenseness in the body can manifest in our muscles, which can manifest in our bones, which can manifest in our hearts, which can manifest in our cortisol, which can manifest in our bones yet again, right? So um, it's really such a beautiful um, sort of structure to understand how caring for the body can actually ripple out into caring for like all of you. Right. Yeah. Um, and so I, I would actually love to ask you the same question um, from Javana um, that I asked Javana earlier about in terms of sort of like working specifically with women over this time, if you've noticed any kinds of patterns that have maybe arisen th that people have shared verbally or things that you've noticed in bodies, if there was anything that was surprising or anything like that, that you'd like to share with us. Yeah, um, like I was mentioning um, before, sometimes um, injuries or pain or not, not retention are work related. So because more people are working from home, they say, Precious, you were right. It was work related, you know. <laughs> so some of my um, some of my patients, they are they are feeling that they don't have the tension and stuff that they have from working from home. And so, and then there are some that um, see that, that they needed the massages as well too, because of the self-care that the helps with the stress levels. So um, like how Javana said, since the shutdown has been lifted, I have been going nonstop <laughs> because, yeah, because people, not only the, not only my regular clients that had came back, but people realize, I think more now how that the self-care is really important. And so, um, yeah, so that's the main thing I've heard is that they, cause they haven't had a massage, like some of my clients that even the ones that came for like once a month, not getting a massage for three months, they notice all those old issues coming back because I wasn't staying on top of it because of the shutdown. Thank you so much. Um... It, it's just it's really interesting right and I mean one of the things that I noticed of um, with the shutdown as we might call it was that the, everyone sort of had to stay in more right you know and it was in some ways this really interesting opportunity to reflect on um, the patterns that our lives had become right you know and how they changed and how you had to kind of like adapt to new patterns whatever that might be right um, yeah. and then when given the opportunity to return to something that feels a little bit more normal it sounds like both both of your clients were jumping right on it. Right? Yeah. Um, so I'm actually going to uh, spotlight uh, Javana again, because I'd love for us to have a conversation, and I'll add me in here too, um, with some of the questions that are coming through. So the first question is actually one that I have for you. Um, and while I ask this question, I'd also love to invite anybody else to submit questions into the chat so that we can have a nice little conversation um, between our two guests tonight. So um, my question for the two of you is, how are each of you in a personal way um, caring for yourselves, right? Like making sure that that self-care happens when your profession is to offer that care, that self-care envelope as it may be to all of your clients. Um, I can go, I'll start. Um, I've learned over, um, over time that I have to put me first, um, that I'm no good to anybody unless I put myself first. So I do have my routine. I do, um, I get up in the morning. I do, um, I do meditate. I do pray um, before, before I start my day. I have to, um, I do, I get massages on a regular basis. Um, and what I do too, I do have a day, just a day of Sabbath, a day where 
I don't do anything. I used to run myself ragged, like just running to the store, running to do errands, paying bills, doing it. So I have days, like I have a schedule and like, like Monday, um, everything was closed. So it like, it made, it made me like so frantic because I'm like, I do everything on a Monday, you know? So it kind of threw me off, but I have a day where I just literally just rest. I have to have a day of rest because it's important for my health, physically and mentally, where I, um, I really just rest. I do little to nothing. Um, and that's usually either like a Sunday or a Monday. And I had to do that for myself because I found myself, um, like my schedule, work schedule was crazy, so crazy for a minute. And I find myself not um, getting enough rest. And when you don't get enough rest, you do find yourself sick. Um, rest is so important. Um, it's so important. So I definitely, I have my routine that I do for myself. I do the Epsom salt in the bath and everything like that. So everything that I tell everybody else, I do myself as well. Um, I'm waiting for the weather, the weather to break so I can get back on my walk because I do an hour walk. Um, and I enjoy that because walking is so it's such a great stress reliever. It's so, and it's just time you have for yourself. And I, I love walking. I walk in my neighborhood. I do like an hour. So as soon as the weather breaks, I'm back on my um, walking routine. Definitely. Thank you. Beautiful. Precious, would you like to answer that as well? Yep. Um, for my self-care, I, um, I try to go to the chiropractor. I actually see them next week. <laughs> so I try to go to the chiropractor um, on a routine to make sure my body is um, as the best alignment possible, especially the busier I am, the more um, the more adjustments I have to get. So I go to the chiropractor, I try to get facials. Um, with COVID, it's kind of spotty up how often I go, but I on a, on a perfect day, <laughs> I would go like every two weeks to get a facial. And um, on top of that, I do try to get my massages myself at least once a month. And then Mondays, like how Javon said, Mondays, I do nothing. I'm not on the internet. I'm not on no social media. <laughs> I don't talk to nobody. I'm just locked up in my room, or I might just do like my own little home facials and stuff like that, and a nice little bath soap with some Dr. Teals <laughs> and I'm good to go. Dr. Teals is the best. Beautiful, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> is that an official endorsement? Right, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, nobody's getting paid here, no, but no, it's no. a good recommendation from professionals. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, you know, we know uh, Dr. Teals, if you're listening in, right. give them an endorsement. Um, <laughs> so um, I do have a few questions from a few of our audience members. Um, the first one comes in from Steph Noble, um, and she is a mother and says that um, many mothers feel, quote unquote, touched out by their children or spouse because they're constantly helping others. And it seems like massage and hair provides a supportive touch for people that is therapeutic. Can you speak a little bit more about how your roles might provide that support and therapy for folks that, um, you know, perhaps are feeling like they're just like overtouched from all the caretaking that they might do in their personal life? Mm -hmm. um, go for first? part. Oh, for the um, overtouch, I would say um, there are some people like when I first started out, there are some people that don't like to be touched. I was one of them. I like to give a massage, didn't like to give them first day, <laughs> didn't like to get them myself. But um, sorry, my dog's right, not my door to get in. <laughs> So, um, um, so I, um, for people that, that's, that feel like they're touched out, 
I would say that you can do little things for yourself, like sex, uh, self-care as far as like, you know, stretches yourself and just try to warm up. Um, you can always, you know, even if you want to try out a massage, you can try out for 30 minutes. If somebody has like a chair event, most of the time, those are short, like 10 minutes. So I would always say, give it a try because being surrounded by different people for as family is a different type of touch and stressor versus when you get in a massage. So all those outside stressors of touch might come to you, but it's our job to make sure basically to remove that from you and throw it away. <laughs> yeah, I can speak also personally a little bit and just say that, um, you know, therapeutic massage was actually really helpful for me in terms of healing some trauma I had around touch. Um, and it was, uh, you know, in, in speaking with a massage therapist, right, and working with them in a very trustworthy kind of way to shift my own relationship to um, understand that touch really could be healing, you know, and that conversation led me into pursuing Reiki, actually, you know, so, um, you know, it's one of those sorts of things where um, I think for a variety of people, these different kinds of care or healing modes modalities can be a gateway to change your relationship to touch in some ways. And I think that what you're saying, Precious, also in terms of the types of touch, right? Like it's a very different type and focus of touch. Mm -hmm. um, and it may be an opportunity to like open new pathways, right? Mm -hmm. Javana, do you want to add anything into sort of like the benefits of a supportive, you know, kind of like touch based practice of that hair can offer? Um, well, definitely. I do um, like scalp treatments um, for people as well. So I'm, I'm really like, I'm like in your face all the time. Like <laughs> not really, but I'm, I have, um, um, it's something with like touch and touching your hair, um, it just, it's a relief for people. Like I'll do like a nice massage. Like if someone gets a scalp treatment, I'll give them like a nice massage. And it, it's like, I don't know. It, it just takes, I can feel the relief. Like sometimes when I'm at the shampoo bowl, I don't know if you guys ever seen that commercial, like that herbal essence commercial. And they're just like, oh, it's like a relief. It's like hell gonna take me away type of thing that happens, you know, like a lot of times because people just feel I don't know. They just feel so free in my chair. They feel free. They feel relieved. They feel, um, I don't know, maybe they feel the compassion I have for them and for, you know, doing their hair and for making them feel good um, from the inside out, you know, so um, it's easy. It's easy to really touch them and they feel, you know, okay. They feel okay with that and they feel great after that experience. Thanks so much. Steph just actually typed in and said she's largely asking on behalf of some of her friends that she's heard from because her child is now 12 and she has to chase her for hugs. So, um, <laughs> they, kids get kids get a little different after like 12 years old. They're like they don't want hugs and stuff anymore. And it's just like what happened to my little baby that, you know, they they get a little different sometimes. They get different. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, I have a question for you, Javana, from Tina, um, who asks, can you offer any advice for someone who has not been to a salon in years and has damaged breaking hair? Um, I deal with that a lot. I deal with um, a lot of people that have lost hair, hair loss. I deal with um, that like on a regular basis. I see so many people that um, deal with different diseases, diabetes, um, high blood pressure, different things like that. So they actually lost a lot of their hair and I actually um, do treatments on them to bring their hair back to life. So that is something I really, I really specialize in that, um, like bringing people here from um, a, um, a broken stage into a healthier stage. Um, so so that's something. would you recommend, would you recommend she come in for professional Help. definitely come in for a consultation because it's um it's hard to kind of recommend what to do without seeing it 
without actually seeing the hair and I can actually see, feel and touch and see what is actually like going on with the hair. So definitely she would need a um, consultation. Okay, thank you so much. She just typed in to say thank you. Um, I have uh, another question from Stephanie Michaels um, and it was specifically about hair, but I think it would be interesting to actually have both of you answer this. And um, I want, so let's ask, have you found that people are changing their routines like in terms of hairstyles or treatments or how frequently maybe they come in for treatments because they may not be able to come in frequently due to time constraints or finances or other kinds of restraints and how that may have changed um, like since the before times versus now or if you're noticing that most people are coming back into like a relatively similar routine that they had beforehand. I would say most, most of my clients are, um, they're like on their same routine. Um, the only thing that has changed is if someone has got sick or, you know, came down with COVID. Um, that's the only thing that's really stopping them. Most of my clients um, are, they're on their regular routine, whether it's once a week, every two weeks, every three weeks, once a month. Um, even my senior clients, um, they have their regular routine as well. So um, I, just, I see people on their regular routines back to like um, the regular things that they can do. And I do have clients, if they go through different things, they'll call me and say, you know, I'm going through X, Y, and Z. Um, I'll be back, you know, maybe next month or, you know, whatever it was, if they were doing every two weeks, maybe like a month or so, but pretty much everybody is on their regular routine. Okay, thank you. How about you, Precious? Yeah. Have you noticed- That's the same with me. Oh, sorry. And that's the same with me that they're all on the same on the same routine and same schedules that they they've been on. If anything, people have increased their sessions. Um, but that was that was it. That has been it. It's been about the same or if not somebody increased. Thank you. There's something that I wanted to reflect on and actually ask both of you about a little bit is that pretty much all of our speakers for this whole series have spoken to the importance of stress management um, as a way of managing the stress of our lives because it's so important for being conscious towards thinking about heart disease, right? And so, um, both of you sort of alluded to the fact that, you know, I, you actually said it straightforwardly, Precious, where you're like, sometimes I'm a massage therapist, but sometimes I'm a therapist. And Javana, you said something very similarly at the top of your talk as well, in terms of how you really listen to and speak to women through all different parts of their lives. So I was wondering if you could both speak to what that role is like for you, actually, you know, um, like, training specifically for that is that something that you know you've just sort of like developed skills for over the course of your practice um what's it like to be this kind of like peer therapist mentor while you're providing these other kinds of services um i could say for myself um i love it i um this is what i'm called to do so when you're walking in your calling it just comes naturally it comes naturally um i've been equipped already um um I take classes as well too, but um, I've been equipped because this is my calling. My purpose is to, you know, to help women. So, um, you know, so I'm, I'm pretty much walking in my purpose. So it, it, I don't want to say it's easy, but it is, it is easy. And I, I love it. I love, I love women. I love um, um, from kids to older, like I have um, younger kids. Like I just love seeing the the different, um, the seasoned women, like, like Precious was saying, like a 90 year old, like, I did a lady, I think she was, I think it was for her like 92nd birthday or something like that. And she has so much spunk and it, it was just amazing to see a lady 92 years old walking in the salon, you know, without like a wheelchair, anything. She was just, you know, walking just by herself. So it's just amazing to be able to, um, to pour into women, whether they're young or whether they're old. Um, I, I love it. I love it. I do. Thank you so much. Precious. Um, I lost my train of thought just very quick. <laughs> so I'm sorry. <laughs> this like, yeah, but for um, for me, it is very rewarding that people put that trust into me 
when they're when they're um when they're getting personal and um you know I've had people you know cry and help people with uh their lawsuits but some of my clients are like lawyers I help them they're like well how much do you think I should go for this client you know <laughs> so I've I've done those things and um as far as like training I'm a licensed minister as well. So that kind of go hand in hand. So um, I always tell people, um, I, I kind of I, I kind of minister to people without them realizing I'm ministering to them. So when they come talk to me, depending on what the situation is, I will... Um, I will talk to them and, and, and especially you can see that they're crying about a certain situation or, you know, they're, they're feeling, you know, whether it's upset about the situation. It's, clients know now when they see somebody out, you know, with some tissue, they was like, oh, you got them too. <laughs> so I will just, you know, go and I was like, and I'll pray for them. So it's like, and, and so I build up that trust where, you know, people don't mind leaving it there. And that's my whole goal for that to treat them both, fit, both physically, but also mentally and spiritually as well too. And, and it's just an honor to see that work through and how to get through to, to them. Because like how Javon said, I think I'm in my perfect calling where I'm helping people um, on all aspects, mind, body, and soul. Thank you. And I just have one more follow-up question for both of you for tonight. Um, both of you spoke about how you are walking in your calling, you know, and that's how you know that this is the right thing and that it essentially flows through you. Um, have you always known that this was your calling? What was, you know, did you like immediately know as a little child that like this is what you were meant to do? Or did you have some twists and turns along the way? How did you kind of like end up finding what it is that you are doing now um, and knowing that this is what you were meant to do for me i had um wanted to do massage therapies in high school but at that time period my mom's like that's not a real job <laughs> so i had to do what mama said <laughs> so but like like i mentioned earlier i was going to, i was already a technician in space and defense and I was finishing up my engineering degree and I was just like, yeah, I still don't want to do this. So that's when I jumped out and just, you know, and did the massage therapy. And I'm so glad, you know, people thought I was crazy, you know, to leave that field and because it's ability and um, I haven't been happier. Amazing. Thank you for sharing. Javana? Um, I went to hair school right after I graduated from high school and I knew that's what I wanted to do. I had, I played with dolls. My mom bought me so many dolls and cabbage patches, Barbie dolls. And I would, I was playing and doing their dolls here like at such a young age. I knew this is something that I always wanted to do. Um, and my purpose as I started going to church years ago, um, the purpose of the here and like the calling, like on my life, it, it kind of manifested, you know, a few years ago when I kind of put the two together. So it's definitely something that I knew I wanted to do as a young, as a young kid. All right. Thank you so much. Um, in closing, are there any like final words that you would like to offer our uh, friends who have joined us tonight? Um, and would you also be willing to share how folks get in touch with you if they wanted to uh, seek your services and work with you? I just want to say thank you. Um, thank you, Jess, for um, just putting this on. This is just such a wonderful um, event. Um, so wonderful. And um, thank you for everyone who attended, um, just for listening. 
And um, it just was a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful event. Um, I'm located at 755 North Salina Street. I'm literally like right around the corner from the YMCA. So I'm thinking like maybe I need to get my YMCA card again. <laughs> this will be perfect. Um, but I'm at 755 North Salina Street, Divine Destiny Creations. Um, you can reach me at 313, 315, excuse me, 313-4892. Thanks so much. And also, Precious, any final um, thoughts? Yeah, again, thank you for having me as well. Um, I enjoyed myself and thank you for anyone that has attended. Um, if you would like to uh, find me, I'm on all social media at Simply Precious Hands. My website is simplypreciousHands.com. Um, you, if, even if you want consultation, you can schedule that online as well for a free consultation. My phone number is 315-818-4263. Um, my office is located at 404 Oak Street, Suite 102. And um, if you want a massage, I just have to tell people you gotta you gotta book <laughs> you gotta book early and book out because I book very fast and I'm already booked with a lot of people throughout the end of the year. Oh, and I also accept HSA, FSA, and insurance. <laughs> No wonder, it sounds um, incredible. So thank you so much to both of you. This has been such an informative um, and lovely evening, um, learning more about your stories, learning about what you do, and also hearing of your expertise in terms of self-care, um, of caring for ourselves, you know, in what might be perceived by some as small or luxurious ways, but are actually so critical to our immediate and also our long-term health. So I just wanted to really thank both of you for um, shining your light upon us this evening um, so that we can all glow in it. Um, and also to all of our uh, friends, our attendees, um, our community who have joined with us tonight. Many of you I have seen um, on other nights from this series as well. So I really hope that you have enjoyed our time together and really look forward to seeing you all next week for our final session. So um, as I always do, I will send a follow-up to anybody that registered to any of these events um, with the information to reach or uh, to sort of like contact both Javana and Precious, as well as some information for next week. So um, as I said in the beginning, thank you to everyone who joined. We are broadcasting live from the Northside Women's Wellness Center. Um, on the north side of Syracuse. And if you have any questions um, or are interested in learning more, you can visit the YMCA's website, which is ymcacny.org, or contact me, virtual at ymcacny.org. So without further ado, I'd love to wish everyone a beautiful night um, of self-care and ease and grace. And um, you know, we'll see you again next week on Zoom. So have a good night, everybody. Good night.